What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Big Sky Bowler coming to you again from Town & Country Lanes and today we are going to discuss whether you should plant or slide into the foul line. Stay tuned. So there has been some debate amongst the bowling community in recent years, especially among the two-handed crowd, about whether it's better to plant or slide as you approach into the foul line. Today, we are going to take a detailed look into both approaches and attempt to determine which is better. First, it is important to understand that no matter if you plant or slide, changing this particular part of your approach will affect your timing. Before we can discuss these two methods of finishing at the foul line, we need to first understand the mechanics behind a plant versus a slide. To put it simply, a plant is when a player comes into the foul line, heel first, and finishes on their toe. Essentially, you're just taking a step. A slide is when a player comes into the foul line, toe first, and finishes on their heel. In one scenario, the player experiences a sudden stop of forward momentum. In the other scenario, the player experiences a more gradual stop of forward momentum. We will start by discussing the downsides of a plant style approach. As bowlers, we already place so much force on our bodies, especially as two-handers. Planting places a lot of force on your slide knee. This can cause pain and possible injury, especially if the player is not very athletic or has an improper technique. Planting can cause timing and accuracy problems as the sudden stop of forward momentum can pull the body offline and cause over rotation, especially in your shoulders. You may already be asking yourself, if planting is so bad, why do people do it? Honestly, it comes down to two factors. Most bowling centers have very old style bowling shoes with leather soles and rubber heels. The leather soles are not really meant to provide a very effective slide, unfortunately, so most people adapt and simply take steps. Unfortunately, many bowling centers have sticky or tacky approaches due to either improper climate control or poor quality of the bowling center. One of the biggest issues we have in the nation these days is bowling centers that are very old and don't have the financial capability to really update their centers. Uh, you'll see this a lot of times uh, in older like wood style bowling alleys where maybe they've updated the lanes but the approaches are all still wood and that can cause a lot of inconsistency when it comes to making an efficient or effective approach to the foul line. Combine that with the lack of general understanding about proper technique and you get a plant. Now, right here in my hand, I have an example of a standard bowling shoe that you'll find in many bowling centers across the United States. What you'll notice, like I said before, is on the toe section, you have a leather sole. And at one point, this leather sole provided a fairly decent slide. However, most bowling centers don't have the ability to replace these shoes. Therefore, the leather sole is completely wore out and it has a tendency to stick more often than it does provide a slide. On the heel section, we have pretty much the smoothest braking capability out there, and that is what provides your brake. And if you account for the fact that the leather sole is usually worn out, like you can see on this shoe, there's a clear difference between the center of the leather, where it's pretty fresh because there's no way to slide there unless you were to cut the shoe in the middle. Uh, the toe right here is very worn out, and that is going to provide more of a sticking motion than it is a sliding motion. Uh, the heel is for the brake, obviously. This is a smoother heel, so it provides brake, yes, but it's not exactly the best brake in the world. And in most cases, what you'll see is people who wear these shoes, they'll try to actually put their toe down first, and it doesn't go anywhere, and so that provides just instant stop. That causes a lot of players to just simply take a step. Now, if you look at my high-performance bowling shoe that I have in my hand here, by the way, this is one of Dexter's more recent releases. Uh, it is the 9 Series, the C9, and it comes with the BOA uh, tie system on the front with the cables. I love it. But the biggest difference between this shoe and a house shoe is the fact that you have a Velcro replaceable slide sole and a Velcro replaceable braking heel. And when these shoes are purchased, you have the option of also purchasing several different slide soles that provide different amounts of slide. I use the Dexter system, so I've got in my hand here as an example of an S6. Granted, this S6 is really worn out, so <laughs> this provides a little bit more braking than it does anything else. I have an S7, which is a smoother slide, and I have an S8, which is a smoother slide as well. 
Now, these slide soles can go up in number and they range from a lot of brake or less slide, I should say, to more slide all the, way, all the way on the other end of the spectrum. And I believe I do have an example of an S10 here as well. So S10 is basically the most slide you can get out of a slide sole. You also have the capability of replacing the slide heel. You have most brake with this shark tooth style heel, and you have less brake with this more smooth slide heel. Having a pair of high performance bowling shoes really does help you as the bowler adjust your slide effectively when you find yourself bowling in different environments. With that being said, you may be wondering, is there really a reason to develop a plant into your game? The short answer, yes. Over my last regional season of competition on the PBA, I learned quite quickly that not every bowling center has approaches that are easy to adjust to, even in the case where I have my adjustable soles and heels. Now I carry these replaceable soles and heels with me wherever I go, but in some cases I do run into a situation where they just do not help me at all, even if I'm wearing the most slide that I have on my toe and the least amount of brake that I have on my heel, which requires me, of course, to resort to planting in order to bowl effectively. Doing it properly takes the approach completely out of the equation and provides consistency. If you would like to develop either a slide or a plant properly, I recommend that you follow this procedure. We will start first with how to develop a proper slide. To do this effectively, we must eliminate our approach down to one step with no ball in our hand to allow us to learn this process effectively. Walk up to the foul line, as you can see I'm doing in this video, and place your heels to the back of the foul line. Take one and a half normal steps away from the foul line towards the back of the approach. Once you find your starting location, turn around and face the foul line. Now simply take a step forward with your slide foot carefully and focus on keeping your weight on your toe with a toe to heel finish. When you're ready to stop, place your heel on the approach as this will provide your break. As you perform this one step drill, make sure that you bend your slide knee a good amount to allow your knee to compress properly and absorb the force of the slide. Your trail leg needs to end up behind you and to the opposite side of your slide foot with your toe on the ground to provide an effective base to hold your balance. I recommend practicing this repeatedly until you feel comfortable with the proper mechanics of the slide. Once you are confident in your ability to produce the slide properly, add your bowling ball to the equation and continue practicing with the one-step drill. The added weight will feel different and may be a challenge for your ability to balance properly. Ensure that you are bending your slide knee properly and keeping your non-slide foot in the proper support position with the toe on the approach and to the opposite side of your slide foot. To develop a proper plant, we need to perform the exact same drill with one minor change. We need to keep our weight on our heel and focus on a heel to toe finish. Remember that we need to take a normal step forward this time and there will be absolutely no slide if this is done properly. Be certain to ensure that you're bending your slide knee properly and placing your non-slide foot in the proper support position to provide an effective base to balance yourself. One of the most important parts about learning how to plant, and I cannot stress this enough, make sure that you're sliding straight forward because the last thing you want is for your slide foot to be turned a little bit, which instead of allowing your knee to compress properly, it makes your knee go in a direction that it shouldn't be going. And if you want one key way to blowing out a knee, there it is right there. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. Hopefully this provides you with the information that you need to improve your game. Please do not forget to like and comment on the video. And if you enjoy the content and want to see more in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click that notification bell. I will see everybody in the next video.